Yeah, 10 9 8 7 6 John O'Rourke is with me here, former Cove manager, former Cove player, former Shelburne man, and I was selling the best of sports equipment all over the city and county, and indeed the country, mm -hmm. and beyond. Um, headquarters, of course, in Italy, where John loves to go for his summer holidays and gets a bit of a tan. And um, Macron, we're talking about, of course, Macron Sports. Thanks, John O'Rourke, you're yeah. very welcome. St. Coleman's Park, place you know, like the back of your hand. Absolutely, Trevor. Family tradition here, of course, with the O'Rourke's. We're up here. Uh, it was a famous quote from one of the guys involved many moons ago called Mick Yaw. We were all young lads, and when the halftime was the blue, we'd all run onto the pitch and try and score a goal in the bottom goals there. And he'd run on after us and said, Come on, get out of that, get out of there. That's no place for football. <laughs>
Hello everyone, very good evening to you and welcome to St. Commons Park on this beautiful evening for Cove Ramblers versus Galway United in the uh, Air City League of Ireland uh, First Division. A bit of history here tonight because uh, Cove are bringing in the game live to live stream for their YouTube channel uh, for the first time in the club's uh, proud history. And uh, a huge uh, welcome to everybody uh, from wherever you're watching us uh, for this live match tonight. Uh, between Cove Ramblers and Galway United. I'm Trevor Welch, your match commentator uh, from Cork's 96 FM, of course, Cove Ramblers media partner this year. And I'm joined, uh, delighted to be joined by fellow Claire and uh, Cove manager, John O'Rourke. Uh, I think John is set as well here as uh, we're almost uh, ready to go in uh, the next uh, few minutes. Sean, before uh, we give the uh, team news, just talk to us about the start that Cove have made and how important it is to get a result here against Galway at home tonight. Yes, Trevor, yeah. Um, they've kind of... Um haven't hit the ground running, um, you know, four games played, four, just four points, looking for goals, they're scoreless in three goals, so I think the instruction of Dara Crowley, that's where they're looking for the goals, he signed uh, recently from Cork City on loan, so they'll be looking to him to get goals, and obviously goals will win matches for you, mm -hmm. yeah. um, so particularly playing at home tonight against Galway, who are struggling as well, they didn't get a good start, Yeah, they're looking for their first win Galway, so they'll be up for it as well, obviously, but uh, Cove playing at home, Fantastic evening here tonight, as you said. So we'd be looking mm. for Cove to take the initiative, push yeah. on and uh, control the game and hopefully get the three points that they'll okay. be looking for. Okay, thanks for now, John. Uh, Cove's first home match since uh, March 7th and uh, they're held scoreless in three of the four matches. So let's hope they can find a shooting boost tonight, Cove Rambers, and uh, Galway looking for their first win of the season uh, so far. Let's give it the team news. Cove have made three changes to the side, which drew uh, at Bray. Uh, last week, uh, Ben O'Reardon suspended, Ian Turner and Keane Leonard dropped to the bench. In comes Daryl Walsh, uh, Cameron Harlson and Derek Crowley on loan from Cork City makes his home debut. Uh, Paul Hunt in goal then, Charlie Lyons and uh, Greg Henry, Daryl Walsh and John Kavanagh, ex-Cork City as well, uh, the back four. Cameron Harlson, uh, Captain Pierce Phillips, Dave Hurley, Conor Drynan, Lee Devitt and Derek Crowley. Uh, that's the starting 11 that's short uh, Ashton's gone with tonight. Galway United make two changes from the side, which true 2 2 with At Lone Town. Uh, Shane Duggan, former Cork City player, is back. He's captain, and Timmy Malloy returns as well. Morris Nugent and uh, Killian uh, Broder drop to the bench. So on goal, you have Kevin Horgan, Kevin Farrer, Kean Murphy, Mark uh, Luden, uh, Stephen Christopher, uh, Donald Higgins, uh, Sam uh, Ward, uh, Shane Duggan. Uh, Timmy Malloy and up front Vinnie Faraday and uh, you have uh, Mickey Place. That's the team that Galway have gone with. So we're ready for the uh, big kickoff then here. You're very welcome along uh, to Cove Ramblers live streaming of this with uh, reallivit.com uh, on Ramblers uh, YouTube channel. So let's uh, hope we'll have uh, some game here tonight to match the marvellous sunshine uh, we have in uh, Cove. It certainly is a, a beautiful day. The pitch in great condition as well. And I, for one, very much uh, looking forward uh, to this uh, game. The match referee is Jason Maddox, just checking the watch and making sure that we are uh, all ready uh, to go then here at uh, St. Coleman's Park. Uh, 200 people, the uh, max amount of people allowed into the ground tonight. And uh, still a good atmosphere. The players uh, taking a knee and continue the movement. The Black Lives Matter, sending out the message loud and clear from St. Comans Park tonight. So, John, um, Cove Ramblers then, as we mentioned earlier, just uh, one win so far from their four matches, uh, held scoreless three times. They'll be looking to put away a few chances tonight should they come their way. Absolutely, so, um, As I said, don't want to be repeating myself, but goals win games, so... They'll be looking for Dara Crowley and maybe Dave Hurley from the midfield getting forward and hopefully contributing with a goal. Kick off their season and get that three points behind them and, and move up the table. As you mentioned, the first game at home for Cove Ramble since March 7th. The only win uh, came against Athlone Town, 3-2. Lost their opening game, of course, uh, here. Been unlucky on the night that the player sent off. In fact, uh, two matches now, Cove have had a player sent off, but uh, lost to Drogheda in their opener. Unlucky at UCD. I might have won it as well um, at Bray last week. Had a goal disallowed. So uh, certainly there can be positives taken from the uh, way the Stuart Ashton team has started the league campaign. Four matches gone, four points. But a win tonight, of course, would uh, mean that they would be up in the playoff places. They could go in uh, to uh, joint uh, fifth, along with the likes of uh, Longford and Bray Wanderers. Big throw coming in. Early chance here for Galway. 
and uh, Paul Hunt is uh, down to smother that, but uh, almost a chance presenting itself early on to the visitors then. Yeah, uh, Galway was kind of a cheap, cheap chance to give away. Um, I think Paul went to sleep when the ball went out to, to, for a throw in Trevor, and then um, Galway could have sneaked in there with an early goal. That was Jared Walsh's uh, attempt to cross, but uh, well off uh, the intended target. Fantastic evening for the game, Trevor. Certainly is. Uh, the supporters, season ticket holders, are enjoying the uh, sunshine this evening in the beautiful scenic town of Cove. As we drive in here today, Galway and they're all white attacking here and uh, getting the cross away as well, but that's uh, easily cut out. And uh, well, Cove just uh, losing concentration for a moment there. That's a good header away by Kevin Farrer. And no offside here, and the goalkeeper's come a long way here, Paul Hunt. And uh, Jimmy Malloy getting the cross away here. And Galway United certainly have made a bright start to this game. There's another cross coming in and uh, defended and away. So just a, a nervy start, John, Absolute, by Cove. Absolutely, Trevor. It's very lackluster. Um, if they're not careful, they're going to concede. Galway seem to have the upper hand in these early stages, and uh, Cove need to get a grip on the game and, and stop this um, pressure from Galway. So uh, certainly Galway United making the, the brightest start. Uh, and again, that's uh, very, sloppy. Yeah, very casual from Cove. Pierce yeah. Phillips, the captain for Cove Rambles, unlike him. Sloppy in possession. Interesting to see how uh, Dara Crowley does tonight for Cove Rambles. Uh, had an influence on the game and Bray when introduced. Starts his first home match. That's another really good cross on the header. Back towards the far post. And again, that's a really impressive uh, by Galway United. That was Vinnie Farty with the header across goal. And... Uh, Fortunate for Cove Ramblers, there was nobody in white attacking that. Yeah, I'm kind of worried here, Trevor, with Cove Ramblers. Um, every time the ball goes dead, they go to sleep. Galway well, managed to get in a short corner there because Cove's backs were turned. So, with the start that they've shown, um, I wouldn't be surprised if they concede, but they need to get a grip of this fairly quickly, or else they will concede. Away by Kevin Horgan in the Galway goal. And again, Galway United in behind the cover here. Finney. Farity. Now, maybe Cove. What a chance to attack here. It's a nice ball on. And uh, almost picking up Derek Crowley. It's a throw for Cove Ramblers. Tapping the clubhouse end in the uh, first half of this game, Cove. Darrell Walsh across to take the throw. Too much weight on that pass. You'd be disappointed with that, uh, Dave Hurley. Yeah, he's usually better quality than that, Trevor. Oh, we just need to settle down, John. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the last bit of possession that they had now, like, just give them a bit of confidence, and uh, hopefully that they've kind of woken up and won't be leaving Galway in as easily as they did in the first few minutes. <laughs> A goal away so far. A draw away to Shamrock Rovers B in their opening match. Drew nil nil then with Wexford Hughes away. And then beaten at home by Cameron Teeley. And a 2 2 draw against that loan last time out. They had to come from a goal behind twice in that game against that loan. But they've made the brightest start here against Cove Ramblers. And uh, that wasn't too clever either from Darrell Walsh. Joined in 2020. Having played the last uh, few years in Wales. <laughs> Dylan Watch was referring to there. Of course, it's Dara Watch. I beg your pardon. Long ball forward here again. And again, Dara Walsh gets it away. Here by Greg Harney and Derek Crawley on the move here. Trying to use his pace and uh, well again, 
That was an opportunity. Long ball forward, picking out uh, Jared Crowley. Yes, sir. Well, yeah, he was unlucky there. He just tried nicking inside the defender, Galway defender, but uh, Galway defender just managed to get a toe to it and go back to the goalkeeper. But here we go again, over on the attack. Cove looking for a way past Galway here, but that's uh, belted clear. Picked up again by Dave Hurley. Smart turn away by uh, Conor Drynan. And that's put away for a Cove throw. by Mickey Place who was a, a goal scorer against that lone town and their uh, most recent match last Monday that's a strong challenge Cove kind of have lost out here on by Faraday and harmlessly out for a Cove Rambler's throw Stuart Ashton will be a little concerned, John, about uh, the fact that, you know, they have been sc held scoreless in three of the four matches so far. Yes, they need a bit more creativity, Trevor. Um, obviously, tonight they haven't created any chances, so they need to step up their um, intensity, I think. They've started the game, as I said, very lacklustre. Um, I know it's hot out there, it's, but the same thing, it's the same for Galway, who seem to have the upper hand. But the last couple of Phases of foot of play there now. Cove had taken possession of and that's a good cross Ooh. and a yeah. headed chance. Yeah. At least they're playing for Connor Drynan. In, yeah, Cove are now playing in the, the goal they have. Yeah, that was a decent cross, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. More of that from Cove needs to be getting there. Yeah, David Hurley on the ball. David Hurley's getting on the ball in the middle of the park now. He's making things happen. It was a uh, first opportunity then of the evening for Connor Drynan. It's true, he's headed that. Kevin Horgan going long again. Cove in it back. There's Drynan. Nice turn and uh, not forward by Dave Hurley for Crowley to chase again here. Looking to cause a few problems for Kevin Farher. Farher lets that go to his goalkeeper. The goal United uh, spent a bit pre season and there were. Uh, I suppose a lot of expectancy that Galway would be up nearer the top, but at the moment behind Cove in the league table with just uh, three points to show from their four matches, three draws and a defeat. Yes, uh, Trevor, when you spend money like that, you, you'd expect um, a return, but um, especially now with the league condensed into only two rounds, like they're going to be playing 18 games. They need to turn their t season on quicker and get something back from that uh, that expense, you know. It's Dave Hurley's ball and the goalkeeper always favoured to win that, Kevin Horgan. And he's throw for Stephen Christopher. That's a good challenge by Pierce Phillips in the middle of the pitch for Cove Ramblers. The skipper. That's a good pressure, but uh, Mark uh, Ludden has done well for Galway United. That's uh, Shane Duggan, and out of play for a Cove throw. So we've played a little under 10 minutes, uh, John, and Cove seemed to uh, settle down somewhat after kind of an edgy start, really. Yeah, I think I have, Trevor, yeah. They're coming back into the game now and kind of uh, dominated the last couple of minutes and then um, put the early threat from um, Galway to bed, really. But it's no surprise that these two teams are down the bottom of the table because they're not really, you know, firing on all cylinders that up up top. There's no threat from either uh, striker at the moment, you know, I haven't seen anything. Cove throw. On the line again for Cameron Alson, but uh, cleared by Mark Ludden for Galway United. Visitors have a throw. But a shortened season 
Cove Ramblers need to be making the most of their home matches. So far, as you mentioned, one win and uh, one loss at home uh, this season. After tonight, they'll have uh, Wexford, August 18. Longford to follow UCD. Bray will come here. On September 21st, Kevin Teeley, the league leaders, will be here. On October 3rd, and Shamagov is B. On October 24th, to finish off. Better play from uh, Cove Ramblers into the channel again. Dark Crowley to chase. Jared Crowley, rather. I think, I think the referee missed one there, Trevor. It was a late challenge from Cove Lad and the Galway player. Galway, Galway side not happy. Throw by Darren Walsh. Oh. And that's uh, certainly one he's not going to miss. Shane Duggan, the Galway United captain, back in the team tonight. Former Cork City player and uh, Limerick. Referee Jason Mannix just having a word with the uh, Galway United captain for the challenge. Yeah, it was a good, good turn from Lee Devitt. I think uh, caught Shane Duggan by surprise and Shane just took out his leg and that gave away the foul. Looks like he's injured himself in the process. Yeah, he's come out the worst than that. Yeah, it seems to be. Shane Duggan. Dave Hurley. Clever free kick. Well, we're going to get it clear. And all the time in the world for Greg Henry, making his uh, home debut this evening for Cove Ramblers. Ben O'Reardon, as we mentioned, suspended one of the... Uh, of course, Ben would be a calming influence in the back with his experience over the last few years, Trevor. So maybe they were missing that at the start of the game when they were all over the shop. Three changes, as we mentioned. Stuart Ashton's team tonight. Ian Turner and Keen Leonard also dropping to the bench. Getting a bit physical in there, and uh, Gold United have a free kick. All but four seasons in Coles League of Ireland history, even be, being in Division One, and certainly with the playoffs this year. They'll have the Ryan that on, but uh, they, yes. need, they need performances. Ah, yeah, yeah, need wins. But there's three spots to go into the playoffs, Trevor. So, like, if they do get a win and get a run put together, they can climb that table fairly quickly, you know? And as I say, three spots, second, third, and fourth go into the playoffs. So, there, there was a great opportunity for them to get, get up there and get that return to the Premier Division. McCover second in the table in 2017, eighth in 2018, and sixth in the table last year. Made it to the EA Sports Cup final, of course, in 2018, which is a really good achievement. Absolutely, it was a great occasion up in the Brandywell. Um, national, national final, first time ever in club's history, so on the day, they just didn't have enough. They were a stronger team, being, being the Premier Division team and home side, you'd expect them to win, and they duly did, but... Nonetheless, it was a great occasion for Cove Ramblers there. Big crowd travelled up and Cove on the day to experience it. So, hopefully we'll have more nights like that. Yeah. Free kick. Taken by uh, Charlie Lyons. And gone all the way out of play on the other side. Big anniversary coming up, of course, for the club as well, John. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100 years. 2022. Your family, of course, steeped in history in this club. Absolutely, Trevor. Before you said it wasn't around when it was uh, founded, <laughs> just in case you were thinking that. Saying that. <laughs> it was a bit uh, of a long time ago, yeah. Yeah. Yes, of course, my family have huge history. Huge history involved in the club. From my grandfather and my own, my father was. My father has every position in the club, from player to coach to member of committee and chairman, of course. For a long time, so um, and his father before him, as I said, he was president of the club when they won the first time they won the intermediate cup, and I can remember him as a boy, and his tears streaming down his face when we when Cove beat Tremor Athletic in the intermediate cup final here in 1980. So that's what the club means to our family and lots of families in the town. You know, it was a, it was the it was the thing to be doing and thing to be involved in as Cove Ramblers. So it's provided a lot of them. Um, Memories over the years for families throughout the town. 
And of course, we've had the imports from Cork, as Bob Donovan, as Bob being the current uh, PRO for um, Cove Ramblers. He'll forever be known as an import. He's trying to always get in, be known as a Cove man, but he knows what he is. <laughs> a lot of those stories sure will be told, especially the year for Cove Ramblers 2022 with a 100 year celebration. That's uh, yes. still in play, by the way. Hasn't gone out. And John uh, Walsh did well there. Now, um, by Pierce Phillips and uh, Connor Drynan got the ball just stuck between his feet. And Skull United with a chance now to break. That's poor. Poor pass by uh, Christopher Reilly. Made it difficult for uh, Donald Higgins. And Cove Rambers have a throw. So Fourth an hour of the game gone. Sure, uh, I'm sure. Um, Stuart Ashton will be reasonably pleased after uh, a rather slow start by his team. On by Hurley, that's nice. And uh, Crowley is just offside. Slightly off. Slightly off. Yeah, I think the, the Cove side now have settled down, Trevor. Um, after the early start, as I said, we're under the cosh, but uh, seem to be the stronger team now in the last five, ten minutes. I remember Derek Crowley made his debut against Cove for uh, Cork City in the Monster Senior Cup quarter final. On loan, on by the captain, Pierce Phillips. Daryl Crowley holds it up really well. That's good play, but uh, poor pass. He'd be disappointed with that. Connor Drynan was his target. Now Galway United on the attack again. Donald Higgins, it's a decent cross, but uh, Cove do enough to deal with that threat. And John Kavanagh, another former Cork City player, gets that away. But it wasn't a particularly good clearance by the uh, right back. Throw goal to United. And that was a good cross as well sent in there. On for a goal kick. It's Trevor. Because of the 3 5 2 system, Cove are playing there. Goal with a goal United player, Don Higgins, keeps getting forward there. Um, it needs to be monitored a bit more. Closely by um, Dad Walsh, and he's the tracker runner there because he's left him in a couple of times. And opportunities have, have arose for Galway. Yeah, it looks lively They're on this right side of uh, Galway United's attack. Got a Good header. free header then. And this is uh, Shane Duggan trying to pull the strings in the middle of the park for Galway United. That's a really sensible pass. Cove needs to defend this and do it. Good play, great ball. Greg Henry. Doing the need for good battle in midfield tonight with the likes of Shane Duggan for Galway against Pierce Phillips and Dave Hurley in the middle for Cove Ramblers. Yeah, and they'd be familiar with each other, as I said. Shane's uh, former Cox City and Limerick there. Yeah, here's the cross Cove deal with that particular threat. Now again by John Kavanagh. In it goes again, though, and Cove have to defend this. And they have a free kick, yeah, a bit a of pushing kick. in there. And the referee, Jason Mannix, has given the free kick for Cove Ramblers. Yes, Trevor, that will be a midfield battle there um, between the two lads. That Whoever dominates that, whoever comes out on top will, will have influence on the game. I think if Shane comes out, you know, you'll see Galway pushing forward. But hopefully Dave Hurley gets him on top of that and wins the game from, from the midfield there for Cove. Henry with the challenge. From behind, the referee thinks that's okay. Galway well, United were looking for a free kick, and uh, pressure on by Dara Crowley. That's better from Cove. They have a throw. Just need to start asking a few questions of uh, Galway United defensively here, Cove Ramblers. Throw into feet again. Drynan. And now the cross, really yeah. accurate one here again, but uh, just a bit too high. It wasn't a bad cross, but uh, uh, Cove would be encouraged by that. Yeah, it was a good cross, good bit of build up there, Trevor. But, um, Connor Drynan seemed to be in there too early, you know? He was in there when, when the ball was coming in, so he needs to time his run a bit better. Duggan on the pressure. And he's lost it here to Phillips. Maybe a shot on here for Phillips. Off the crossbar. 
How unlucky then, Pierce Phillips. Well, that's more like a bit, of, a bit of aggression there from Pierce Phillips winning the ball back and having a strike, a tremendous strike off the crossbar. Well, Very the goalkeeper was beaten like all ends up then. It was uh, kind of a curling shot by the captain, Pierce Phillips. And that was so unlucky, inches away from uh, giving Cove Ramblers the lead then. He was really aggressive in the challenge with Shane Duggan when he spoke about that duel a few minutes ago. And Pierce Phillips almost putting Cove Ramblers ahead. And he'd be cursing his luck then, Phillips. He struck it, couldn't have struck it much better than that, John. Yeah, yeah, he did. He struck it really well. But um, it's the determination and aggression that Cove need to show now. And hopefully the other players will pick up on that, what Pierce just did. And then... Uh, Push it on themselves. Murphy, Hurley and Turner, the only goal scorers for Cove this season. All those goals coming against Athlone Town. The previous home match. And Pierce Phillips was close to getting his first goal of this season. Hit it sweetly. And the goalkeeper was just fortunate to see the ball come back off his crossbar. Here go Cove again. They've hit a purple patch here. And the referee hasn't given the free kick. Well, it looked like a clear free to me, I have to say. He's, he's, he's leaving a few things go, to be fair. The referee is. But I think he, he could have pulled that up. Long kick again. And this should uh, be easy enough for Cove. Paul Hunt wearing the cap, facing the sunshine in this uh, first half. He's made 116 appearances for Cove, one of the most capped keepers in Rambler's history. Hunting, really, yeah. I suppose um, the goalkeeping position is, um, has been a bit varied over the years with different players. I played with Mike Devine, um, Stephen Henderson, obviously previous manager. Oh, that's, that's something to know. 100, 100 and a half parents was fair play at the pot hunt. Yeah. Signed in uh, 2016 from Longford Town. Won a first division title with Longford, didn't he? In 2014. And a key role as well. Yes. In first division runners off spot in the season of 2017 for Cove. Crowley the target here again, and he could get him behind the cover. And that's proper defending. Oh, silly. Crowley with a push on the back. Of, uh, it's very frustrating. Kevin Farher, yeah. Very frustrating giving the, giving the foul away when the defender's running away towards his own goal, facing his own goal. Shouldn't have did it. Very frustrating. We're getting back to uh, goalkeeper Paul Hunt, Trevor. Yeah, the experience that he brings to the squad, to the dressing room, was invaluable, like, especially with all these young lads, only young lads trying to get a game. Oh, Galway could be in here. This is a chance, a real chance for Galway, and they've wasted it. Vinny Farrity knows he should really have uh, hit the back of the net then. An absolute great chance. In behind the Cove cover, free shot and goal, and uh, it's too high. But uh, Vinny Farrity might get a better chance in the match than that. No, you really should have put it away, Trevor. It was a golden opportunity. Golden opportunity. You really would expect uh, Farrity to have yeah. found the back of the net then. So that's a let off for Cove and a warning for Stuart Ashton's side. They've got to be focused here. Just the one clean sheet so far, isn't it, this season for Cove? And that was uh, last week. Yeah. Up and break. Yeah. Well, hopefully it's trying to think to come, Trevor. Um, that was a good battle last week, bring the point back. But as I said earlier, it's the home games you need to be winning. Get the three points, get a, go get a goal, get a, get a win behind you and take it from there. Three goals uh, scored for Cove, five against, exact same as uh, Galway United actually. Three, four and five against. Drynan, smart turn from him. Dave Hurley, it's a clever ball into the pants of uh, Carl Walsh here. Walsh keeps it in play, does he? No, it's out. Looked like he uh, kept the ball in there, but the referee... Uh, the I thought it was in as well. With a signal from his uh, assistant, said so the ball was out of play. And that touched a goal with Claire last. Cove Rambler's throw. So just about 25 minutes gone. Scoreless. 
and Cove Ramblers first home game since lockdown first home game since March 7 they're really getting a grip on the game now though Cove Ramblers even though they have let Galway in more than once Greg Henry that's a really good cross there to be competed for and it falls nicely here for Walsh to try and measure across it's low and oh what a chance again for Cove Ramblers it's a really clever cross from Walsh and super that play. was another big chance for Cove Ramblers super play super play great ball couldn't have asked for more as a striker to get the ball coming in like that from Darrell Walsh I think uh, Cameron, Cameron Harrison was unlucky not to get the, on the end of it he was stretching but he didn't, couldn't reach it it was Drynan who was positive play. stretching wasn't it the, was the, at the back post yeah Connor Drynan a really good cross though from Walsh right. Right. and uh, he couldn't have been more than a, a foot away from making contact very unlucky, Trevor. Yeah. And surely Cove would have been in front. Positive signs. Good positive signs from Cove's point of view. The chances of both end. Yeah. It's been a good 26, 7 minutes or so, this contest. That was uh, Donald Higgins helping it on. And this is Stephen Christopher with the cross. And Paul Hunt came for that. Didn't get there. And uh, well, Vinnie Farty claims that was a corner. Hunt made a decision to come there and it might have been costly. Yeah, he wasn't, he, he didn't connect with the ball or the, I think he, he was very, very lucky he got away with that, Trevor. Yeah, Farty just went out of play. Sorry, John, Farty and uh, Donald Higgins in particular causing a few problems yeah. for Cove. Yeah, as I said, Donald Higgins there. He's come getting down the right wing in behind Darrell Walsh. Because Cove are playing the 3 5 2, it's Conway have seen that and they've spotted it and they've identified that as their. Their way in, let's say, and they just put the ball, they played it into that channel a few times now. Because of the season being condensed, three points would be absolutely huge for Stuart Ashton's team. To it's been a really good contest so far. Not a difficult ball in the sun to do it here, and headed back uh, safely by Charlie Lyons. Joined Rams from Freston last year. Made his debut in the uh, Monster Senior Cup against Cork City. Firm fixture on the squad now. Centre back. It's a chase on here again. Donald Higgins is causing a few problems, but uh, Cove have the throw here. It's on by Higgins and uh, won back by Cove again here. Here's Lee Devitt. Lost it. That's a clever pass into the channel again. Now all about the delivery this time and uh, easily cleared. It was uh, Timmy Malloy with the cross for Galway United. Not a particularly good one and easy for Cove to get it clear. Yeah, but again, Trevor, they're, 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 Galway have seen spotted the weak link. They're putting the ball in behind Darrell Walsh. And the centre halves there, Charlie Lyons not getting out to the space with any bar any priority got in behind him there again. So unless they get that sorted, they're gonna get punished for short throw. And that's a clever play again. I'm a loy. And a shot fired in. Oh, right across the face of goal again. It's the man we spoke about, Donald Higgins. And, uh, well, made good contact. Well wide in the end, but again, a dangerous cross. Yes, Trevor, yeah. He is causing Cove all sorts of problems. Donald Higgins yeah. on this right side. That's where the play is developing for Galway. That's where they're getting the joy. And um, as I said earlier, if Cove don't start it out, they're going to concede a goal. A kick from Hunt. No contest in height then between Farragher and Dara Crowley. He'll win those high balls all day. It's into feet for the likes of Drynan and Crowley that Cove want the ball. And Harrelson, all good on the ball. 
Yeah. Stay right, Johnny, stay right, stay right. This is only man. David battling for Cove. Wins a throw. Lee Devitt. Nicely on again. Uh, Darren Murphy is there for the return pass, but that's too heavy from Dave Hurley. Pity that. It's Cove getting numbers forward in that particular move. And that's a foul, surely, by Conor Drynan. Free kick over United. Just yeah. a few touches, passes going astray. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a good bit of passes to play there, but I'm lucky with Dave Hurley. You wouldn't expect it from him, but Dave overhit the pass there. Um, and then Shane Duggan was cute. He had a bad touch, and you could see the co player coming in, so he kind of bought the foul there. Diagonal ball again from the goalkeeper, Kevin Horgan. Picked up by Duggan. And out wide again is Higgins. Be torn in the side of Cove Rambas defence at the moment. There you go, United number 15. On it here again. Some clever one twos. Look at the return pass here again. But uh, Pierce Phillips had read that but lost his footing. And the cross allowed in again, but dealt with by Greg Henry. But he is the one that is making go the United tick at the moment, Donald Higgins. Just need to get a bit tight on the goal with number 15. You need to, Trevor, yeah. Like, you do expect that some of the experience has to identify that the problem is that in that area and get it sorted, but just they seem to be leaving a goal. There he is again. Stroll for Cove. You're watching the first ever live stream by Cove Ramblers Football Club against Galway United in the SSC or Tristley League of Ireland First Division they're joining us late in the game it's scoreless but both uh, sides have had chances Pierce Phillips hit the crossbar for Cove after the 20 minute mark Conor Drynan getting close as well but uh, Farty has had one of two sides and goal for Galway United it's pretty even Stephen and this coming to you live on Cove Ramblers YouTube channel Televised by WeLiveIt.com. Nice play again by Donald Higgins and Duggan just about got there. Galway spread the ball wide left. All about the cross here now again. Bit long. Cole still need to defend this and drying them. Heads are clear. Throw for Galway. Stephen Christopher. Christopher again for Duggan. And that's blocked by Drynan and Crowley helping it on. And uh, Pierce Phillips in a strong challenge again. He doesn't hold back Pierce Phillips and uh, referee allowing uh, Galway the free. I think he was unfair there. I was saying he was unlucky there, Trevor, Pierce Phillips. But to be fair to him, he's shown that aggression that Cove, Cove needs uh, as a team show, start showing because he's going trying to win the ball back. As we've seen earlier, he did it on one occasion. And, for, and had a shot on which hit the crossbar so it's that type of play that Cole will be looking for it doesn't pull out Pierce Phillips and uh, Keen Murphy felt that for sure it's a big fellow Keen Murphy gone up to join the uh, attack here for this uh, free kick taken by their goalkeeper Kevin Horgan ball knocked in to the danger area but Cove headed clear well it's uh, smartly done again by Malloy and uh, Another dangerous ball in towards that man, Vinny Faraday. And he Great wasn't chance. far away from making contact, was he? No, he was just looking for the flick on there, and he was unlucky. Any bit of contact at all, I think he would have taken a pass beat. Paul Hunt in the goal, keep in the goal, Cove. Again, Galway getting in behind the defence. Got a big physical presence, doesn't he, at Faraday? Yeah, he's a big, big lad. It's causing Cove problems there now in the last few minutes. But he should have... In all honesty, he should have put Galway 1 0 up with that chance. He had a great chance early on. Both sides having their chances, but still scoreless. As we approach the uh, 35th minute mark, that's Farty getting in front of his man again. That's a clear. And uh, out for a throw for Galway United. Charlie Lyons taking no chances. 
Jennifer Jornia Slade Cove making three changes from the side, which uh, drew a Bray last week. Ben O'Reardon suspended, so he's out. Ian Turner and Keen Leonard dropping to the bench. Darrell Walsh into the uh, back four. Cameron Halson and Dara Crowley also start. First home start for Dara Crowley. It's a big throw. And, uh, well, Hunt away to his left. Had to make sure that wasn't going in. Absolutely. He's gone quick now, to be fair. I'm a great save. But again, too easy um, for Keen Murphy to get the header in. He wasn't really challenged. It was kind of a free header from a throw and a travel 30 yards, 30, 40 yards, Trevor, you know. So it's not, it's not really good defending from Cove. They need to up their game defensively. Yeah, the sun in his eyes as well, Paul Hunt. Had to make sure. Got his hand to that. Ooh. And that's dangerous play, surely. Leg up, and it is a free out for Cove Rambers. I think it was Mark Ludden who threw himself at that. Yes, he came out. He, came, he led with his foot and he came out the worst. Mm. It's going to need some uh, treatment here. The uh, goal United number three, Mark Ludden, just lunged at that. So the Cove Ramblers team, again, as uh, Paul Hunt in goal, with John Cavanagh, Charlie Lyons, Greg Henry, and Darrell Walsh, the back four. Cameron Halson, Captain Pierce Phillips, Dave Hurley, Connor Drynan, Lee Devitt. And Dara Crowley. Claire's taking a, have a water break. It is a really hot well, evening. Well deserved water break. Gold United make two changes from the team, which uh, drew good at loan on Monday. 2 2 on that night. Came from behind twice. Morris Nugent and uh, Killian Broider dropping out. Shane Duggan back in, the captain. And Timmy Malloy. So, Galway, Kevin Horgan, Kevin Farrer, Keen Murphy, Mark Ludden, who is uh, receiving treatment at the moment, Stephen Christopher, Donald Higgins, Sam Ward, Shane Duggan, Timmy Malloy, Vinnie Fardy, and Mickey Place is the uh, Galway United team. So, approaching half time, John, it's, uh, I suppose it's been pretty 50 50, really, in, yeah, in, so. in terms of goal chances. Yes, I, th I think so. Um, but I'd be worried um, from a call point of view, Trevor. Uh, Galway just getting in behind. The fact that Cove are playing the three-five-two system, there Galway have identified behind in behind Daryl Walsh. There's a lot of space, and they're utilising that. And Donald Higgins seems to be getting in behind him and causing problems, and leading to a couple of chances to Vinnie, for Vinnie Farty, particularly the one that he should have scored really. So it is even Stephen, but Cove need to be more. Cautious in defence. So Hunt, he starts the play. Cone Cramblers, goalkeeper. And uh, that's uh, certainly not too clever, was it? Greg Henry put his goalkeeper in a spot of bother then, John. Yeah, it was, it was, it's like watching Real Madrid there. Mm. Surely they should have learned from things like that. The thing is, Cove Ramblers aren't Real Madrid and St. Coleman's Park isn't the Etihad Stadium, so the ball is going to bobble. And, and it did bobble there towards Paul Hunt, so he just got away, but I think it's crazy. Um, it's it's risk-taking that they don't need to be doing, you know? Yes. Thankfully for Greg Henry, he didn't do a run on that one. <laughs> on by uh, Dave Hurley. That's uh, a handball, free kick Cove Ramblers. Now let's see what Cove can produce here as we approach half time. Long one again towards Dara Crowley and uh, right across the area, and the goalkeeper smothers it. And Galway, I'm sure, felt that was going wide and yeah. uh, a ball right across. And Charlie Lyons did well to keep it in and get the ball across. Yeah, it was a good cross from Lyons. You might have caught a glimpse of the uh, new um, advertisement boards around the ground as well. Corks 96 FM, the new media partner for Cove Ramblers. It's a really good addition. Cove get it forward and on by Pierce Phillips. Phillips applying the pressure here and uh, Phillips was in very quickly. 
on the goalkeeper and the referee is uh, going to show a yellow card to the cold captain here. I'm afraid that's the, game, that's the way the game has gone, Trevor. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that, personally. But uh, again, it's aggression shown from Pierce Phillips that Cove needs, you know? Well, he was fortunate he didn't get a yellow for the first one. Yeah, possibly, yeah, yeah. Early on, he had another strong challenge, but... Uh, yeah, he needs, in, in the time of the game these days, he needs to control his aggression now, unfortunately. He has got a yellow. Cove had a man sent off in the first uh, two games, didn't they, in the season against yeah. Strada and Athlone? Yes, yes. I think, as I said already, that's the way the game has gone. You know, you have to be, you have to be yeah. careful. Stuart Ashman will want to keep 11 on the pitch, that's for sure. Yeah, it's hard enough to get a win with 11, so to if you drop down to 10, you're making a hard of yourself. Goalkeeper, to be fair, though, heavy touch on it, and, uh, yeah, and Pierce Phillips was entitled to go for it, wasn't he? Exactly, and that's what threw the challenge, that the, the opportunity was there for Pierce to win it, and he went in. It was the fact that he was diving for the tackle, I think, you know, and as I said, the climate of the game today, these days, is that there will be a foul, it will be a foul, and it inevitably leads to a card. I think the goalkeeper made a meal of it as well when he screamed, there's a few shots, you know. But again, that's indicative of the way the game is going. Nicely on by Phillips for John Kavanagh. Kavanagh sends his ball long towards Dara Crowley. Again, that's headed firmly away by Kian Murphy. Akam Cove again. But, uh, Crowley's on it. That's for uh, Dave Hurley. Wanted a bit of movement then. It's falling fortuitously for Connor Drynan. And Hurley's on it again for Cove. And that's for Phillips. And Kavanagh. Joining the attack here, wide for Halson. Not all about the cross here for Halson. Can he find the delivery? Onto his left foot, back onto his right, trying to make room for the cross. Cove have a number of players in there. And uh, it's That's tidied up uh, by Kean Murphy. A corner kick for Cove Ramblers as we approach half time. Yeah, it was a good play from Cameron Halson there. He didn't give up on it. He just, you know, checked back. He wasn't uh, rushed into just getting rid of it. Made the space for the crossing, put a good cross in, which led to a corner. So it's positive again from Cove Ramblers. Maybe here for Cove. Dave Hurley standing over this. Again, he's a left boot around this. Hurley. It's good delivery, too. It's come all the way across, though. And out for a Cove oh. throw. Came off a Galway player last. So possession still with Cove Ramblers. Looking to keep the pressure on here as we approach half time. Two good chances apiece, but still scoreless at St. Coleman's Park on this very warm evening in August. Big throw, not done by Hurley, Phillips, and Kavanaugh between them. Win it back for Cove, but now they've lost it. Golly United looking to get forward, but uh, stopped by Greg Henry and Dave Hurley. For Cove Ramblers, looking for a strong finish to the half here, the home team. Nicely on. First time of asking by Darrell Walsh. And Hurley back again for Walsh now. Can Walsh get the cross away this time? Oh, that's disappointing. Needs to do better there. Needs to do better. Great chance for a delivery. No pressure on the man. And he two to aim at in there. Absolutely. Got that one all wrong. Again, Dave Hurley did very well to win the ball back in the midfield and put, put Darrell Walsh away on his own. Bit of composure, surely he should have shown. Unfortunate there, but great opportunity to get across him. But again, Cove getting back into it and dominating now for the last few minutes. 45 minutes have been played. There will be two minutes to be added at the end of what's been an entertaining first half. But still we wait the first goal, and maybe here Higgins knocking across again. It's those one-two again. Faraday, they're the two that are causing most problems for Cove Ramblers. Well, it's a clever ball in, a real chance here. Oh, what a save that is by Paul Hunt. Point blank save from the goalkeeper to deny. Is it Duggan coming in? Shane Duggan, yeah. Controlled it very well. Um, an instant shot, but super, super save. Again, we talked about Paul Hunt's experience early on. It all came into play there. But again, I refer to Paul, uh, Donald Higgins, who created a chance for Shane Duggan. He's getting too much freedom, Trevor, and he will, as I said, cause problems. And it will surely lead to a goal if they don't get a hold of it. It was a lovely piece of play to open Cove up. And really, Duggan should have found the back of the net then. There's his corner. Low. 
and uh, well away from the target. But uh, the Cove goal living a charmed life as we approach half time. What a save that was from the goalkeeper. Super save, Trevor. Excellent save. Point and blank, wasn't it? Reaction yeah, save. Yeah, it was super save. Got it over the bar as well and out, out, out just for a corner. It was hit with uh, Venom for sure and heading into the yes, top Shane, of the net. Shane, Shane Duggan would have been disappointed that it didn't end up in the back of the net. I suppose when he saw the ball coming in and took his first touch, he said, this is it, this is a goal for me. But great save. Oh. So a let off for Cove Rambers right at the end of the first half here. Big kick again. Kevin Horgan in the Cove uh, United goal. Hurley losing out to Duggan here. Yeah. There's uh, Higgins, but uh, just uh, left short for him. And there is the final whistle of the first half at half that uh, ends scoreless, but there's certainly been plenty of chances at both ends. Faherty with uh, Galway's best chance, along with uh, Shane Duggan and uh, Pierce Phillips hitting the crossbar for Cove Rambers midway through the half. So as the teams make their way to the dressing rooms here at St. Comets Park at halftime, it is uh, Cove Ramblers nil, Goal United nil.
Andrew, very welcome back to a sun-drenched St. Comas Park at halftime then in this SSE Eritrea League of Ireland first division game. It's uh, Cove Rambles nil, Goal United nil, but uh, both sides having their chances. And uh, in particular, uh, we picked out Faraday and uh, Dylan, number 15, giving uh, Cove Rambles a real tough time of it in the uh, first half. They've had some yeah. good chances. They have, yeah. I think, as I said earlier in the commentary, uh, we have identified the space in behind our watch. Donald Higgins is getting in behind him and he's causing... causing trouble he's creating chances for Vinnie Faherty and to be fair Vinnie would probably say to himself he should have tucked away one of them anyway at least you know he had a great chance so Cove got away with it in that sense but uh, they came back into it and really Pierce Phillips is leading the way with his aggression and you know his determination to win the ball back and it, on one occasion he won it back really well and he was just outside the box he decided to have a crack and it was a great shot keeper was nowhere unfortunately for Cove it came back off the crossbar but that's the type of determination Cove needs to show in the second half, Trevor. Um, with Cove now playing into the, the, the town end and the sun in the Galway defence, uh, the, the eyes of the Galway defence. So, you know, hopefully Cove will push on and get the, the win that they need, you know? Yeah, you have to give credit to Paul Hunt wearing the cap in the first half, facing uh, into that strong sun here that we have uh, this evening, making that save from the uh, Galway United captain, Shane Duggan. It was a real great reaction save to keep the score at 0-0 uh, zero, zero as we approach to go into the uh, second half. But uh, as John mentioned, well, goal, Pierce Phillips showed a lot of aggression, the captain. And so unlucky not to have given um, Cove the lead on 20 minutes. He's, he robbed Shane Duggan of the ball at a strong challenge. And then he's, uh, he's wasp of a shot coming back off the crossbar. Yeah, yeah. And that's the, that leadership that Cove needs, you know. Um, the only other thing about that is that unfortunately then he got booked for a challenge on the goalkeeper, which, you know, as I said, that's the, that's the way the game has gone these days. Uh, he just has to be careful now. Um, now, I'm not doing anything silly. And, uh, you know, as I say, he, himself and David Hurley now will have to step up and show the initiative because David is, is doing well, but he needs to dominate more. And, and he can. He has the ability to, to set things up for Cove and give the likes of Derek Crowley and uh, yeah. Connor Drain and yeah. get him in behind and get him create chances for them to score. I was going to ask you, John, about uh, Derek Crowley and his uh, debut uh, for Cove tonight. Well, he did come on against Bray, but uh, he's on loan from Cork City. Uh, the former chairman, Bob O'Donovan, and former City player below us handing up the coffees at the moment. Uh, yeah. But um, Derek Crowley, your, your view on him and his first half performance making his uh, full debut for uh, Cove Ramblers Hill home tonight. Yeah, he looks lively enough, Trevor. Um, no, he hasn't had any, had any clear cut chances, but he's, he's getting up in the air, he's competing, and um, he's coming shown for the ball a couple of times there. David Hurley is, is looking for that sharp pass, and as you mentioned yourself in commentary earlier. Dara's looking for it into feet so he can get a hold of it and get a grip and get possibly get turned on the Galway defence. But uh, no, he's lively enough and uh, he seems to be a good addition. I'd just like to see, obviously, him getting a chance and we'll see what he can do, you know? Mm. Uh, just in terms of crosses for Cove Rambles, because Dara Walsh has got down the left-hand side, put in a few really good crosses. One in particular where Drynham was just a foot away from just get, getting a touch to it. And that's all that, that, that was needed to give Cove yeah. the lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, they're creating that type of chance. Um, Darrell, yeah, he got in he, at that, on that occasion. He put a good cross in, but again, he needs to. Uh, maybe I'm a bit too critical, but there was other occasion there. He, he should have had a, produced a better cross, you know. Mm. No one around him, and he had all the time in the world. But look, it, that's the way it is, you know. He's young, kids they learn from that, but uh, it's a, it's an in, like you know, he's good left foot, and um, he should be doing better. And he'd say himself that he, he should have done better yeah. on that occasion, you know. Yeah, in terms of, uh, you mentioned Faraday and Higgins, they're certainly the danger man, and Cove will have to get tight in them, particularly Higgins, who's causing a lot of problems on the right-hand side in the second half, John. Yes, yeah, um, they'll have to get a hold and get tighter, and Darrell, uh, as I said to you, the system that the Cove are playing is 3-5-2, like, if it was a more traditional system, 4-4-2, there'd be no questions, like, the left foot would pick up Connor, or D Donald Higgins, and, you know, hopefully get more tighter to him, but the fact that Darrell is pushing on, there's space, he's, he's leaving space behind him, and, and the left side of the centre half, Charlie Lyons isn't isn't getting out, so the space is there. Higgins is getting in behind Darrell and and creating chances as it is for, for Vinny Farity. But also when when Darrell does get tight on Don Higgins, the space is there for Vinny Farity to come across Charlie Higgins, Charlie Lyons, and he's getting in get the receiving the ball in there, causing a threat for Cove. So mm. unless they get that out, it, it, to be fair, we're above it in the first half, but they're going over the other side now. But we could see it far clearer than you know maybe Stuart. Ashton and his team might spot it early in the second half and get something done about it. Or maybe they've done it already in the, in the dressing room, you know? Yeah. But it's certainly a threat that Galway have mm. and they, they've, they've had joy from, like, you know? The team's ready to come up with the second half. John, do you anticipate 
Stuart Ashton making any changes for the second half? I wouldn't think so. Not in the early stages. Well, he, he probably not a half time anyway. I think he'll leave it as it is, Trevor, and he'll see how we go for the or how cold go for the first ten minutes, fifteen minutes of the second half. Yeah, uh, the teams I can see Galway United actually uh, coming out. Uh, of their uh, makeshift dressing room for this uh, match because of uh, these strange times we live in yeah. at the moment with COVID-19. They're in the um, they're in the clubhouse side of it, and uh, as, jo as John mentioned, Cove will be attacking the town end in the second half. And uh, that uh, Liam McMahon's uh, stand and what a great legend of the club he was, of course, Liam McMahon, John. Oh, absolutely, Liam's uh, uh, his legacy with Cove Ramblers is there for everyone to see. He was a fantastic manager in the most successful period of the club. As, a, as an amateur team um, and he also was manager of the team when we went into the League of Ireland so and he's, he's looked after a lot of players a lot of players came through Liam McMahon's uh, guidance and learned from him and what a, what a man to play for. Okay well uh, as you can see Galway United are out uh, for the uh, start of the second half and here come uh, Cove Ramblers as well onto the pitch and uh, let's hope uh, for goals in this uh, second half. You certainly uh, have had chances and uh, really the game shouldn't be scored at this stage because uh, there were really good opportunities, in particular for Galway United, when um, their centre forward, Vinnie Farty, had a great chance. And right at the end of the first half, in first half stoppage time, in fact, uh, Galway United's captain, Shane Duggan, had a really good chance. Probably hit it too well, actually. And Paul Hunt uh, tipped it over the crossbar. But um, more of the same, really, in the second half because it's been a, a, a cracking uh, contest so far between these two. And uh, if you're uh, just joining us, you're watching this being live stream on Cove Rambler's YouTube channel. And um, you're very welcome along wherever you're watching from uh, tonight. Great to have your company uh, for a bit of history tonight, really. Relivit.com uh, on cameras here at St. Commons Park on this historic night tonight. And uh, really strong sun for this game. Shouldn't complain, I suppose, John, but some of the cameramen complain about the sun going low. <laughs> I, I would imagine that some of the centre halves there and the goalkeepers would be complaining as well because it's very strong, Trevor, as you say. But what a day we've had in beautiful Costa del Cove, as they call it. <laughs> I love that, Costa del Cove. Second half on the way, and John Cavanagh with an early clearance. Hasn't gone very far, though. And um, doesn't look like either side has made a change at half time. It's as you were from the first half. And that's a poor ball. Given away by uh, Lee Devitt. And that's uh, wasteful by Mickey Place. Haven't seen too much of uh, Mickey Place in the game as yet. I thought he was all over the place. <laughs> He's all over the place. I couldn't resist that, Trevor. Sorry. He's all over the place, but not just in the right place. McGalway viewpoint at the moment. But he did score in the previous match against uh, Athlone Town. We've got to compliment the former chairman as well, uh, handsome Bob O'Donovan, for providing a beautiful coffees at halftime. Nicest coffee of have ever. ever. <laughs> Cove looking progressive at the moment, uh, you know, trying to create a really strong message in the community. And it is a, a great sporting town, as we know. Cove, uh, Billy O'Leary, the new chairman, coming in. Yeah, Billy would be. Um... Here go Cove Ramblers. We'll hold that for a while, John. Uh, that's not a particularly good cross. And, uh, well, Kim Murphy almost making a meal of that. But uh, Cove progressive? Yes, absolutely, Trevor, off the field. Yeah, they've, um, they've rejigged a few things. Um, new bodies in looking after the club. And as you mentioned, Billy O'Leary being one of them, Billy's the chairman of the club. Very progressive guy, a very um, hardworking guy, and he get a lot done for the club. Um, him and the, the, the lads that are with him there, they're, they're all young lads, but they've all, um, they all come from families. As we mentioned earlier, we're steeped in the history of the club, you know, in the town. So they're all there pulling the same way and wanting the best for the club Ramblers and for football and cold. So we wish them all the best, but I know, I know they will they will be successful they've done a lot they've generated um, a lot of sponsorship which always helps and uh, even this the likes of this now that we're doing tonight the live streaming like you know 
the young blood in the club is making this happen and uh, it can only go it, it can be positive and it can only um, hopefully transpire to the to the pitch and get promotion which is, is what everybody craves here in Cole. Yes indeed and when John was talking John Cavanagh certainly made a strong challenge below us and uh, Carlson on the ball now didn't pull out of a challenge rider nicely on here for Pierce Phillips and he has it again for Cove here the captain and Cavanagh joining the attack here and this looks a bit promising here in Cavanagh I'm sure that might have been meant for a cross. Yeah, I think so. Trevor, I think it was um, he was trying to pick out Connor Drain in there at the far post, but um, sometimes they go in and you can claim there was a shot, you know? So, unfortunately, the COVID didn't go in tonight. Kevin Horgan in the uh, Gold United goal wearing the cap in the second half. That it really is a strong sun he's facing into. That's a poor cross from uh, Mark Ludden, giving the ball away. Not a cheapy then for Gold United. Derek Crowley had two men on him, but uh, Coves retained possession. And that might come true here for Crowley. And Crowley's offside. Flag was up. It was uh, quick thinking by Lee yeah. Devitt to try and send Crowley away, but he had just gone off. Yeah, he was unlucky there. Um, just stepped stepped into the offside position as the play was developing, Trevor. But um, I think Cove started lively enough in the second half. And as you said there, John Cavanagh putting in a tackle. So hopefully that will set the tone for the second half. Encourage and place trying to get in here, but uh, not on this occasion. Paul Hunt getting down to make the save. And that's for Phillips to try and keep in play. And he did so. Crowley's touch was too heavy. Goal United win it back in a smart turn by Shane Duggan. Good pressure then by Cove Ramblers. Stuart Ashton has a good squad of players at his disposal. The likes of uh, Ian Turner, Keen Leonard on the bench tonight. We might see them at some point before the end of the game. I think so, Trevor, yeah. If, if there's no, no change there, I think that, uh, after 15 minutes of the second half, he might look at options from the bench. And That's nice might... from Harlson and the cross oh, uh, again. again John, John from Cavanaugh, Cavanaugh, yeah. yeah. Again, it was similar to the last one, cross comes shot kind of thing, but uh, and it ends up being neither. But yeah, I'd expect to see a change after 60 minutes if, if there's no change in the goal in the score. Well, that was uh, nicely done by Harlson on for uh, Kavanagh. It's a couple of chances now. He's had okay. to put in a good cross. Yeah, similar to uh, Darrell Walsh in the first half, lads. When you get in that position, you have to deliver, you know. John Kavanagh, 10 appearances for Cove, um, joined in 2020 for a second spell. Son Long from Cork City, began his career at Ringman Rangers, didn't he? Before joining Cork City yeah. all those years ago. First division runners up medal with Cove in 2017. That spans at Waterford as well, and Finn Harps, of course. John Kavanagh. So what does the second half hold in store? Will one of these teams collect all three points? It would be absolutely huge. Every game now is a scrap. Mm -hmm. Yes, Trevor, whoever gets it, three points would be a huge advantage. Miss Phillips on it for Cove. Well, it was. It's lost out. Hurley beaten to that. And Duggan for Galway United trying to get away from... Um, Lee Devitt, Devitt did well there actually, put him under pressure and Hurley, first time uh, pass away, but nobody there for Cove Ramblers. And that was uh, nicely tidied up by Farragher. Galway looking to go on the attack here. The full back got up in support then, but uh, Galway work it backwards to get forward again. Uh, that's a pull. On the shirt, free kick for Goal United. I think it was uh, Darrell Walsh, wasn't it? With the yeah, 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 yeah. soft free kick away there, just pulled, pulled the shoulder back. Free kick then with Goal United. Stephen Christopher standing over this one. Big physicality in there, Goal United. Yeah, we mentioned it already. Vinny Farrell, he'd be a strong lad. 
So I'll be looking to pick out him and um, Keen Murphy as well, also be a threat. And there's a cross coming in eventually and headed away by Harlson. Back in there again. And uh, goalkeeper has it, but uh, had gone out of play, according to the referee, for a corner kick for Galway United. Oh, we're looking for a penalty there, Shane Duggan. Indicating that the goalkeeper pushed him. I don't think the referee wasn't buying it, obviously. More than hope, I think. Yeah. Some more defending to do here for Cove Ramblers. Let's see what uh, Galway United can work from this. Right footed, and the goalkeeper came for that, got uh, his fist to it. Cove can boot it clear. Only uh, Connor Drynan forward. Now Cove might get it forward here, and they're getting numbers into an attacking position. One of them is uh, Harlson, and he's room here for a cross. Three in the middle to aim for, and it's blocked. Super chance there, Trevor. Cove with four, four, five on three, one stage, but uh, didn't get the ball out to Carl Harrison, Cameron Harrison, quick enough. And he kind of delayed his cross, so at least they got a corner off it, but you know, it's positive again from Cove. Important block that, wasn't it, by Malloy? In the right place at the right time for Cove United, because Cove certainly looked threatening then. Dave Hurley will take the corner kick for Cove Ramblers. Left-footed goalkeeper came for that and was nowhere near it. But Galway were switched on. Great delivery. Back in there again by Cove. That ball won't quite reach Mickey Place. Hurley the target here. He did well then Dave Hurley to knock that forward. And that's good pressure by Cove Ramblers. Absolutely. Great delivery there from Dave Hurley for the corner. And then um, really you'd have to ask questions, why aren't you, why isn't there someone getting on the end of it? The Galway defender actually hooked it away. It was just off the ground, like you know, so there was no one going in attacking the ball for a header from Cove's point of view. Kavanaugh with the throw for Cove. No foul. Well, it looked like a free kick. Hurley was adamant that that was a foul. Possession back with Cove Ramblers in any case. The challenge was on Derek Crowley. Up on his feet. The uh, Loney from Cork City. John Kavanagh with the throw for Hurley. Hurley on it again. Just tried to wrap his left foot around that. Back into the mix again here. And uh, oh, that looked a free kick. Well, that looked a free kick all day long. Referee yeah. hasn't given it. Again, Crowley is tongue to the ground. John, that for me looked stonewall free kick right on the edge of the penalty area. Yeah. I think he's missed that, the referee. I think so. And then the linesman just been so close to it as well, Trevor. You wonder what he was looking at. But what, what he was looking at was, was he was looking at the referee as if to say, will I make that call or not? And the referee just said no, <coughs> which is often what happens. <coughs> to be fair, it was definitely a free kick. Kean Murphy just comes storming into the back of Dara Crowley. Yeah. <clears throat> he got away with that, the centre back, for sure. And that would have been a really interesting position for Cove Rambers. Carlson wins the header. He's got his back to that as well. Phillips in again strongly. And that breaks for Drynan. And Drynan on the move here. Crowley shows him where he wants it. But he's lost it. Pity that. Now Duggan for Galway United. Nicely on for Ward. Sam Ward. And uh, again, Galway United. A bit sloppy in possession. Certainly a lively game. Plenty of uh, physicality in it, as we'd expect. Every point so priceless because of the shortened season, John. Yes, yes, Trevor, yeah. And as I said, 
if a team puts a run together, a run of wins together, then it's shoot up that table. And it's such a short season that we're going to have because of the COVID. And they put themselves in a great position for a playoff spot. As it stands, Cove would move into sixth with a draw. Over UCD. Oh, Hurley gets it forward here. Doesn't quite reach Darrell Crowley. John Kavanagh and he did well then to get away from uh, Mickey Place. Well, we have to be careful here. It's a really good first touch, wasn't it? Needed to be from uh, Christopher. Had he got that wrong, he might have been in trouble. Yeah, yeah, there was no room for error there. Um, it's all a bit frantic at the moment, Trevor. There's no one getting down the ball, getting up down and starting to play it. You know, it's, since the start of the second half, it's just been up in the air and hoofing it here and there. There's not no food of the football being played at the moment from either team. Trying Forward by Walsh. Throw for goal United. Cove certainly defending well in the second half. Trying to create a chance here. That's a teasing one. Phillips for Harlson to chase, but the goalkeeper read it early. And Harlson has a bit of pace. Yeah. Goalkeeper did well. Yeah, it was a good ball there, played in behind the full back. Goalkeeper read it well. And the role of the sweeper coming out and clearing the ball. Almost measured to perfection from Pierce Phillips. Throws with Cove and Harlson the target again here. He almost got in behind his man then, Mark uh, Luden. Goal kick for Goal United. Usually around the time when. Managers might be thinking of a switch. Who's going to make the difference? Yeah, I'd say there's something going to happen soon enough, Trevor. From, from Galway, Galway look to see. There's that time, 15 minutes gone to the second half, still nil nil. One, one of the coaches is going to make a call uh, either way. That's good defending again. My co Ramblers. Christopher on it here for Galway United. Cove certainly seem to have got a handle on Donald Higgins and Vinnie Faraday in particular. Yeah, then there's no, there's certainly not the same threat that I had, uh, had in the first half. So it's been nullified there by Cove. And right on cue, Cove are going to make that change, I think. There we go. Yeah, normally this time the coaches will be looking at to make a change. Looks like uh, Mickey Place is the one who's going to be withdrawn here. We did mention that he wasn't in the game. Yeah. You seem to be on uh, uh, the peripheral of the game there, really. Now we're the first to show their hand now. And it looks like uh, Shane Doherty is the player coming in in his place. Pardon the pun. <laughs> I'll give you that one, sir. There's one all now. One each. More goal, there are more goals on the commentary side than on the pitch. <laughs> Crowley will chase this, but uh, unable to get there. There's too much weight on that. It's a pity. Yeah. It's no confirmation. Shane Doherty is in for Mickey Place for Galway United. I wonder how long Stuart Ashton will leave before he makes a switch. Cove looking the better side as the game progresses. Yeah, I think so. Knocking, knocking it around now. Hopefully an opening will come. Greg Henry knocking it forward here. And uh, that's out for another corner. Keep the pressure on. That's the idea now from Cove Ramberts. Let's see what uh, goal we have defensively here from this set piece. Again, it's Dave Hurley on his way out to take this corner kick for Cove Ramblers. First, Stuart Ashton will be encouraged by the uh, start of the second half. For yeah. Cove. Well, 
as we mentioned earlier, they've nullified the threat that Ronald Higgins was causing them. Um, and to be fair, Cove are the stronger side of the second half. Carly haven't uh, threatened Cove at all. So, yeah, sure, we'll be reasonably happy, but unless things change. I switched the corner way. kick taker. Sorry, John. Yeah. It's uh, John Kavanagh. Oh, it's a right, on it. right footer, yeah. And Hurley is going to have a go with his left foot here. Oh, it's gone in. Cove have hit the front. Ramblers lead. And in the end, I think it was the centre back, Charlie Lyons, who got the last touch. Yeah. It just ricocheted in there. It was uh, belted back into the danger area by Dave Hurley. And I think it came off Charlie Lyons last. And Cove Ramblers are in front. Yeah, it was uncanny, really, because as you said, Dave Hurley was heading out to take the corner. And they switched around to John Kavanagh taking it, who swung it in. Galway cleared it. And Dave was at the edge of the box and hit, hit a volley that was like a dam buster. And Charlie, Charlie Lyons. All around, he was like a goal hanger, the old traditional goal hanger. He just sneaked it into the, into the net for a goal. Yes, Charlie Lyons is the man who has broken the deadlock here at St. Comas Park, and that could be a massive goal. Now, let's see what Goby United are made of now and how they'll react to that. But uh, you can't say it wasn't coming. Cove started the second half really well, and I've got the reward here. Charlie Lyons, his 25th appearance for the club uh, tonight, joined Rams from Preston last year. And uh, he would be absolutely thrilled with that goal. Absolutely, and, and so was Stuart Afton. Obviously, an expected come from Charlie Lyons, but a goal indeed, nonetheless, and puts Cove in the lead. Time for a water break. A really warm evening at St. Comans Park, if you're late joining us. This is the SSC Electricity League of Ireland First Division game between Cove Rams and Galway United. And at the moment, Cove have the lead. Cove came into the game in seventh place in the table with four points from four. Galway with three from four. And a win would move Cove into those playoff positions. That would be the top five. But uh, let's not get carried away yet. A long way to go. Just where we're sitting at the moment, John, um, brings me back to the time I was working on multi-channel TV all those years ago, late 80s. When a young, unknown Roy Keane came on as a sub to play against West Bromwich Albion, I remember, in a, a pre-season friendly. And I think you played in that match as well. Yes, so yeah, uh, uh, your memory serves you right. Um, that was um, 1989, yes. I think it was. We played, home, uh, uh, we played West Brom at home in the friendly. Um, they beat us 4-2. Um, I'm not sure. Roy was playing, but I didn't know. Yeah, he came on, yeah, definitely. Okay, he came on. So, uh, yeah, there was... I think we were beaten 4-2, as I say, um, Jamie Cullimore scored a goal, I remember that. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, as, a, as far as I remember, if I can, someone can correct me, I think it was a lovely evening that night as well. They were, yeah. they were rearing off and goal. Yeah, and then you had a great uh, Stuart Pearson as assistant manager, I think. He was, yeah. Uh, to um, I remember former Arsenal man, wasn't he? He was the manager. Brian, Brian Talbot, was it? Brian Talbot. Brian Talbot, Talbot. Yeah. yeah. I remember I was playing, um, as you said, centre half, and there was a fella called Chris White, Mm. centre half for West Brom but he was former Leeds Leeds yeah. United fans who were all ecstatic at the moment because he got back into the Premier Division did remember him yeah, I got Stuart Pearson's tie off him actually that night in the Commodore oh, went really? for a few drinks afterwards and he being a United fan as well it meant a lot uh, I remember Pearson as a young fella playing in the uh, yeah. the cup final against Liverpool back in 1977 yeah. and um, it was a West Brom and tie probably still have it in the attic somewhere <laughs> at home. But uh, I think another place. memory from that night, John, is that Dennis Keane, Roy's brother, was man of the match. He was, yeah. He was Dennis, actually brilliant that night, Dennis was, Keane. Yeah. Dennis played that night. Dennis was a player player. He, was, uh, he had all the skills. Um, but obviously, Roy went on to do a lot, as we all know. Roy went on to do a lot better things than uh, their player. No? Yeah. Great, great, great memory to have there for us. He'll be forever remembered with his time at Cove, Roy Keane. And uh, no doubt, he'll come up and... Uh, the big booklet to celebrate 100 years of Cove Ramblers in 2022. And things yes. looking good on the pitch tonight. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's great to get the, the goal and hopefully they can push on now and get a second. Cove get a clear. Goal we need to react here. They'll be kicking themselves, Galway United, uh, for not taking one of their really big chances in the first half. But yeah. still they have time. Yeah. Plenty of it left. It's the, old, it's the old cliche, Trevor, isn't it? If you don't take your chances, you know. It's goals wins games.
Now there's a dangerous cross and uh, no problems for Paul Hunt. First time front upfield for Harlson to try and use his pace here. And uh, he certainly has put uh, the defender, Mark uh, Luden, under pressure and wins the corner kick. This yeah. is really impressive by Cove. Yes. Uh, fair play from uh, Paul Hunt there. He's seen the danger. He's seen Carmel Harlson making that run and he's, he's putting in a great ball, but which put the Galway United defender under pressure. It's led to a corner now for Cove. And again, Dave hurley has gone out with a sweet left foot. Hopefully he can put in a, a nice uh, corner for the Ramblers forwards. Hurley was uh, involved in the goal, of course. His goal was heading, or his ball was, uh, his strike was heading goalwards. Knocked in by the defender. And there's the cross coming in. And while well, a diving header away, I think it was Farnsey back helping out. And there's Kavanagh. John Kavanagh having a go and falls nicely here for Hurley again to try and measure another cross with a sweet left foot. Oh, it's a really good cross. And well, Harlson might have done a lot better with that. That was a really good cross by Dave Hurley. Yeah, again, Dave's quality is shown again there. To be fair, a sweet left foot, as I said. And Cameron Harlson really has to do better there. Trying to at the back post. He has to get that ball across the goal, give his fellow striker a, a chance. Oh God, we almost got themselves in trouble then with uh, Lee Devitt uh, lurking, but a few more changes for Galway United, three in total. And here's Crowley trying to get onto this here, and now he is tripped, and that will be a free kick for Cove Rambras. Yeah, just outside the penalty area, Trevor. There's a guy came on for Galway United, his name is Jack Lynch. <laughs> It's a really great court now. No, no one's saying he has tunnel vision. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be 2 1 to me now. You're on form tonight, John. Cove Ramba's on form at the moment, on the up. Uh, uh, in front, yep. through um, Charlie Lyons, and now a free kick in a good area here. If Cove could double their advantage, well, They've been moving ever closer towards a crucial three points. Yeah, I think, I think, I don't want to be um, tempting fate, Trevor, but like they went away to Bray last week and got a great point. To follow up with a home win would be terrific. Phillips, oh, you knew from the second he left his boot that was going away from the target. Yeah, yeah. Didn't get his head over, it just leaning back and up and went over the bar. But getting back to the three points, Trevor, it's amazing what the three points could do for a club a team over Ambers to get the confidence, you know. And uh, is the, the next game is Wexford, is it? Well, uh, yeah, next uh, next home game is Wexford. Yeah, there's a good delivery, and a goalkeeper's come a long way here. Paul Hunt and uh, had to be sure and was. And uh, danger not clear yet here for Cove Ramblers. Back come Galway United again in search of an equalising goal. That's a good delivery. And Cove get that away. Well, they've handled the Galway United threat a lot better in the second half. And uh, Crowley gets away from his man here. Now has a look up and needs support for a cross here. Gets it into that danger area. And, uh, well, that looked promising again from a Cove viewpoint. Crowley got away. And Galway looked to be stretched. They certainly can't afford to concede a second one goal over here, and uh, that's not the best of passes, but uh, it's kept in play by Mark uh, Ludden. Oh Down the line. Oh, that's nicely done, but uh, Kavanagh used his strength, and that's good defending by John Kavanagh. Looked like he was uh, going to be outdone then, but uh, used his strength and his body shape, and uh, that's going to be a free kick given against uh, the Cove Ramblers player, Lee Devitt. Yeah, that was good. Experience shown there by John Cavanagh there and using all his strength. Killian Broder on the deck. But, uh, felt that one, the substitute. Galway United certainly using their bench. Stuart Ashton happy enough to keep it as it is at the moment, John. Yeah. Um... It's hard to see where, where he could do make a change. Maybe um, one of the lads up front there, I'm looking at Dara Crowley there, he seems to be breathing, breathing heavy. So uh, maybe um, he put a strike on Keane Leonard. It's a really good team performance. I call Ramblers, especially in this second half. 
They've limited Go United and they've created themselves. Like, oh, I haven't had a chance in second half, to be honest. They haven't, haven't been up in the penalty area at all, really. Which is credit to Cole Randers. So level on points at the moment with uh, the likes of uh, Longford and Bray. Cove Ramblers. Longford and seven and Bray on seven. And uh, the referee's decided that is a free kick. Given against Greg Henry. Dangerous area now. But uh, just mentioning before that foul, Cove will move level on points with Bray and uh, Longford if they hold on here. Yeah, we, we put them put them right up there, Trevor. Really, you know, and it's, it's where they want to be. And as I say, start off here with a win, and you get a few wins under your belt, and you move right up that table. UCD will be just one point ahead of them in third, but it will be a first battle. Like there's a lot of teams there yeah. that are thinking the same thing. You know, there, there will be a first battle for um, yeah to get that playoff spot. Because I think Kevin Teely is just too strong for everyone, and I think they'll they'll run away with the championship. You know, here's the freak coming in and had to be dealt with. And Cove get that clear. Yes, Kevin Teeley, the league leaders, with 13 points after their five matches. Yeah. Drawn in second, three points behind a 10 from their five. But uh, should Cove win this match this evening, they'd be within three points of second place. Yeah. So, got to think positive. Absolutely. But the first division is a kind of a graveyard, like, you know, it's yeah. very, very hard to get out of. Yeah, but dreams are free. Absolutely. And let's hope that uh, Cove Ramblers can see this one out. You expect Galway will have a go late on, maybe create another one or two chances, but uh, credit Stuart Ashton's side, been really good and impressive in the second half, stuck to the task, been a really good team performance. Yes, as I say, it's, it's hard to see where you can make a change because each player is really giving a hundred percent and um, They've got the reward so far. So another break here. Uh, Galway have a, a player injured. Injury. Yeah, and it's the players come on, isn't it? Yeah. Killian uh, Broder. He took a knock a few minutes ago. And a Galway attack. And uh, the substitute has to be replaced here. And uh, it's uh, Lombato. Francely Lombato has come in. And if memory serves me right, I think Lombato scored the equaliser against uh, Athlone Town. In the 88 minute to make a 2 2 last Monday. Hope the same doesn't happen tonight. So, uh, the Galway bench emptied. Yeah, Galway call, call played, played their hand now. Um, The only thing you see about that, Trevor, is that they have fresh legs on the park, you know, and the longer this goes on, Cove will probably do, should make a change here or there just to combat that, you know. The ball had been out, but uh, Derek Crowley was looking for handball, which it was, but uh, the referee's whistle had sounded for a throw for Galway United. Visitors looking to attack here. Haven't created too much in the second half, but maybe they might get in here. And this is a chance for them. And a goal. That's some substitution. An equaliser for Galway United. And he took his chance really well. Well, that was a really good finish. 
So That's the man we spoke about, Lombardo, who got the equaliser on Monday in the 88th minute against that loan, has come on the pitch only a few minutes. And he's levelled it up here for Galway United. But we knew they'd probably get another chance or two before the 90 minutes were up. And he took his chance really well. He did, Trevor. He made all the run from Tat. He won two, so he set it up perfectly and he's safe for the the net. It was a great goal. He looks a bit of quality, to be honest, in, in the short space of time that we've seen him. Hunter, no chance. Keeping that out, you just wonder why um, Lombardo didn't start this game. He, yeah. He's, he's he certainly took that the, chance beautifully. The as chance. I say, in the short space of time he's been on, he looks far more impressive than, the th than other lads in the team, you know? Now, how will Cove Ramblers respond to that? They've been the better team of the second half, but they've just conceded a goal, and Crowley held off it then, and it's broken here for Halson. And uh, that's too short for um, Devitt. That's a throw for Cove Ramblers. Well, sting in the tail for Stuart Ashton's side. He's so well in the second half. Yeah. Let's just make sure that we've got away on the up now that the Cove with a composure, but I don't let him get in for a second, you know? But you've got to credit the substitute. He's only on the pitch a few minutes, and Francie Lombato right into the corner of the net to equalise for Galway United. By Hurley here. Can Cove get another goal before the end? Crowley on the chase here, applying the pressure. Built to clear by Kevin Horgan. Lombato beaten to that. And again cleared by Horgan. Not convincingly. And again, good jump by Darrell Walsh. Lombato with the header. And leg high. By Phillips and the referee has blown the whistle. And uh, well, Pierce Phillips will have to be touch careful here. He's on a yellow card. Yes, he is. Yeah, but I think that was just uh, you know his leg was high, wasn't anything malicious in that, Trevor? Like you know, but certainly got an hour in the ascendancy. Um, that Lombardi fella de has definitely made an impression, and he's he's up to Galway's level of in, uh, intensity. There's the free kick and a header. Oh, goal. Galway United in again. And uh, a lapse in concentration by the Cove Ramblers defence. And can you believe it? Galway have scored twice in the space of five minutes. Well, Stuart Ashton will be absolutely frustrated with that. His team were in control. And it's uh, Vinnie Farty eventually who has scored for Galway United. Threatened throughout the match and an easy header in the end. Uh, super finish, Trevor. Headed it back, headed it back from where he came from, in off the post. So Farty has Galway United in front from being a goal down. They've responded so positively, Galway United. Their manager, Alan Murphy. We'll be absolutely thrilled with the way they've come back here. Yeah, well, we've mentioned changes, and, you know, to be fair, Anna Murphy has made changes that have come on and made an impact. Cove yet to make a change, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, they'll definitely have to do something now, Trevor. After going behind. Well, this is a real test now for Cove Rambers. After being in front, they now find themselves... Two goals to one behind. There's Phillips holding off his man. On by Henry. Nobody there for Cove. And that's going to be the goalkeepers all day long. Still low uh, movement on the Cove bench. There are one or two players were warming up. Maybe a change coming soon for Stuart Ashton, but... Cove have it all to do in the closing minutes here. Throw for Cove Ramblers. Out off of Donald Higgins. Kavanagh will take the throw. That's football for you, Trevor. We were saying there when Cove won it up. We couldn't see a goal coming from Galway. They didn't threaten once. They didn't make any chances in the second half. And Alan Murphy makes a change. And the whole game changes. 
as it is Galway with uh, leapfrog Cove Rambers. They move on to six points, but Cove stuck on four. There's still time for Cove Rambers to try and uh, get something from this. Just the performance we deserve. Hurley with the free kick. Devitt does well there to read that, getting the better. Donald Higgins. Forward by Paul Hunt, but uh, easy for the goalkeeper. And this will be hard to take for Stuart Ashton if Cove don't get something from this. Yeah, it's a real signal, Trevor. Still time. Well, that won't reach Harlson. That was the idea. But Gold United now have their tails up. Two goals to one in front. And there's another cross coming in. Another dangerous one that Cove have to deal with. Away first time. Might be a throw for Cove Ramblers. Dogan getting forward for Galway United. They tidied up. Galway United looking for their first win of the season. Is it going to come? That's St. Coleman's Park. I have Cove got an answer laid on here. Cove Rambler's throw. To the last uh, decisive few minutes, John. Yeah, um, Cove need obviously Cove caught chasing the game now, Trevor. But you just look at Shane Duggan there in the middle of the path for Galway. His experience is, is shining through now. He's still going, he's still throwing on. He had a great run there and just bought the. Pushed on into the sense into Cove's half, you know, and he's leading by example. Um, then you look at the likes of Dave Hurley and um, Pierce Phillips in the middle of the park from Cove, and they're, they're kind of you know, they're a bit subdued now, obviously, after going 2 1 down. But this is the time you need the players like that to dig deep and push your side on. The equalizing goal, you have to say, came against the run of play in the second half, but uh, the fresh legs on, as John spoke about, Francis Lombato. Was only on the pitch a couple of minutes and got the equaliser. And then Vinny Faherty, who was a threat all evening, has got the goal that could win it for Galway United. And full of running now and endeavour. endeavour. Shane Doherty making life difficult here for Cove. But they have a throw. They haven't got much time, Ramblers. Just about three minutes, I make it, of regulation time left. Whatever the referee decides to add on. Now, Drynan for Crowley and back for Drynan again. Well, that looked promising. Free kick for Cove Ramblers. It's a nice one, too, wasn't it? Yeah, nice one, too. He was through unless he was taken down and uh, now an opportunity to present yourself. Who's going to take this? Money is on Dave Hurley, I would think. Or maybe just suit a right footer. Phillips Pierce, the this captain. Is going Pierce Phillips going to hit this, yeah. Is this his moment? The Cove captain. Looks like Phillips is going to hit this. Referee, I'm not particularly happy with the wall of Galway United. Maybe there's just a bit of holding in there by uh, Shane Doherty. 
Now this might be the chance. He's got to wait a long time here, Pierce Phillips. Eventually, it's Hurley who hit it. They're looking for a handball in there. It's Dave Hurley with his left foot blocked by the wall. Cove looking to come again here. It's getting a bit desperate now for Cove Ramblers. As he approached the final minute of normal time. Kavanagh, man on his back. And he's pushed over. And that'll be another free for Cove Ramblers. And a strong finish here. Yeah, they're certainly getting opportunities from free kicks. Trevor. Have to make one of these count now. Darl Walsh standing over this. Let's see what Cove can produce. They need something now, that's for sure. Walsh sends it in there. That danger area. And knocked across the goal and in. Cove have equalised in the dying minutes. Well, it's no more than they deserve, really. It's, that goal it's two oh. goals each. And it's, uh, it's uh, again, lines me. again. Two for the centre-back. Don't see the ball hanging again. What odds on no. that? Two goals for Charlie Lyons. No, he wouldn't have said that at the start of the game. And every goal is welcome. I wonder if we'll get a winner now. Well, what a night Charlie Lyons has had. Put Cove in front. And now he has equalised for them. Really laid on here. And I suppose on the balance of play, is it a fair result at the moment for you, John? Um, yeah, you'd have to say so, Trevor, yeah. Um, it would have been really disappointing if Cove had lost, but now they're back in. Well, they will the stay game, above think, Galway. Sorry, John. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, on, on reflection, it is probably a fair result to draw. Big throw coming up here. Flicked on. And there's a free out for Cove Ramblers. Five minutes to be added. Plenty of time for a winner. From At the end of 90. Side. Yep. Plenty of time to find a winner here for either Cove or Galway. And it's given away. Doggins touches heavy though. And Pierce Phillips has done well here. Easy getting by his man. And uh, Phillips going down, but nothing doing. And uh, Galway had an opportunity to break, but uh, it's that man Lyons who gets it forward. And Bato here on the attack for Galway United. And that's uh, blocked. And out for a corner kick. So maybe a late chance here for Galway United. More defending to do. They have to be clued in here. Cove Ramblers have to keep their focus now late in the match. Tired minds. There's the uh, corner coming in. And it was uh, a chance, wasn't it? Was Great it chance, uh, a free Lombardo? header? Yeah, free, a free header. Should have did better. And that was an opportunity from yeah. that corner kick for Galway. As you said yourself, you'd wonder why this Lombardi fellow wasn't out from the start because he certainly has brought something to the table here with Galway. Well, that looked like a foul by John Kavanagh. Kind of got away with one then, you could say. Uh, no, I think um, I, I think Shane, Shane Darty was trying to buy one there. We saw Carlson battling for all he's worth. Now it's a foul on Mark Ludden. Still time for either side to find a late, late winner here. Well, Cove Ramblers got off to a very bad start in their league campaign, losing at home to Drogheda 2 0, and then lost away, unluckily, to UCD. The late goal caught them there. But since then, beat Athlone and drew with Bray, and now looking for a winner here. Crowley chasing this, but Duggan gets their first Tuesday experience then and read that well, Duggan, because Crowley would have been in. Carlson. In for Crowley. Couldn't quite uh, fall his way, though. Mambato for Galway. Duggan. Yeah. 
And that's away by Greg Henry. Still time for a late winner. Henry, a strong defending. Wasn't going to allow Shane Doherty to buy him then. Mark Ludden will take the throw for Galway. And the big one coming up here into the area, flicked on, flicked away from goal actually. And that's Dylan, he's left that short in the shitty cabinet. John Cavanagh does well then. And Phillips away, looking for Harlson, but Duggan is there. Harlson's back onto it here. He's got a man out wide here. If Harlson can pick him out, that's well, a lovely pass here. Now, Drynan, there's going to be a very late chance here for Cove Ramblers. Three in the penalty area, waiting for the delivery here. And it's falling for Hurley. Oh, it's blocked. It's still there for Harlson. Oh, blocked again. What drama here. And Kavanagh's in there. Oh, it just won't go in. Oh, late, late drama. And uh, that was the chance for Cove to uh, nick it in the end. And how did it stay out, John? An unbelievable passage of play, Trevor. I can't believe it. Jesus, when it was coming to us, uh, David Hurley, his left foot, I said, this is it. And it hit off, unfortunately, it hit off the back of a Galway defender to keep it up. And that will be that you feel now. Unreal. That was the chance. As John mentioned, when it fell to the left foot of Dave Hurley, you felt that, go that Cove were going to nick it in the end. It might still do. Hurley's on to this. Harlson away to his uh, left here. And his forwards over hit for Harlson. If he had hit that any weaker, Hanson would have been on to that. Still there, though. But Phillips and that's uh, come off for defender. And the goalkeeper, Kevin Hawking, gets there. And looks like Galway are going to hang on for a point. Race on here again. Oh, and that was really good play by Doherty. And Paris Phillips had to get that spot on and did. I have to say, it, Trevor, that's been superb from Paris Phillips there. It was up. This end of the pitch, top end of the pitch, trying to get the third goal. Got back very, very lively and obviously had to make that tackle. Executed perfectly. Last bit of defending to do here for Cove because the time I make is uh, up. So one last piece of defending for Cove Ramblers. Here's the corner. Goalkeeper Paul Hunt fists it away. Back in again for Dylan. If he still hasn't sounded the full time whistle, now he will. That is the full time whistle at St. Thomas Park. Cold stretch their unbeaten run to three, but they dropped uh, two points at home to Galway United, who have yet to win the season. Well, Charlie Lyons gave Cove Ramblers the lead, but back came Galway United with substitute Lombardo and then Vinnie Farty to give Galway the lead. But Lyons came up with a good to score. He's uh, second. For an equaliser, share the spoils then here at St. Coleman's Park to finish his Cove Ramblers 2, Gold United 2. Uh, John, fair result in the end for you, or maybe Cove might have just won it in the end? Well, with that chance at the very end, yeah, you could have said Cove could have gone on and win it, but that would have been very harsh on Galway, I think. Um, I think it was a fair result at the end, Trevor 2-2. Yeah. Good game, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, you know, Galway showed, showed good character to come back and go into the lead then, but then, again, the saying that Cove... Also showed good character to get the equaliser and could have went down to win mm -hmm. it, you know? Yeah. How was so. Stuart Ashton view it uh, after the match? We'll go down and speak to him after. But five points from five matches. A couple of the games might have done a bit better. Should we maybe on seven or eight points, to be fair enough? Well, yeah, I suppose you, you can say if some butts, you know what I mean? But mm. um, at the end of the day, they're crying out for a win. Um, yeah. Playing your home to Galway, who are, you know, struggling as well. So today, today should have been a win, like, you know, for them. Um, but unfortunately, they didn't. But... They are playing well. Um, again, a win will come, but when will it come soon enough to push on for promotion? Is the thing? Is the thing? You know. Yeah, they uh, stay above Galway United five then from uh, five, uh, but uh, a couple of points off those uh, crucial top five places. But still, plenty of games uh, to come here. And uh, you know, Cove Ramblers showed a, a lot of character in the match. Um, so I suppose the last question, John uh, Stuart Ashton, will he accept the point, or do you think he'll, he'll be saying they probably should have won it? Oh yeah, I think he'd say we should have won it. Uh, Cove should have won it. Like he will, he he'll have that belief that they should have won it. But um, as I say, he'll move on. There's plenty of games left, and he'll uh, he'll be looking for the win. Um, the next the next game.
Okay, great to have your company tonight, John O'Rourke, former uh, Cove Ramblers player and indeed Cove Ramblers manager as well. Delighted to be here, Trevor. Yeah. Pleasure. Great to have you here in the sunshine me. tonight. And uh, the first game ever uh, streamed by Cove Ramblers on their YouTube channel. Uh, it was a pleasure with Paul and Luke as well from uh, uh, on the camera work tonight. But uh, we live it and um, that's where we have to leave it. So the final score here at uh, St. Colin's Park, uh, it finished uh, uh, Cove Ramblers uh, to Galway United uh, to from all of us here. A very good evening to you.